Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 56 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, where, ooh, it's dark out. Oh, it's a solar eclipse. Would you look at that? I didn't even notice. I didn't even notice, but we are totally in the middle of a solar eclipse. I should, I should take advantage of this. I really should. Because the night after a solar eclipse is when you can discover a very nice constellation, which I don't think I've discovered yet. And I was gonna play with Astral a little bit today anyway. So, you know, that's a nice segue into some that was pure chance. Like, I'm not even kidding. Not even kidding that that was purely by chance that that happened. I was gonna play with Astral a little bit today, and then this happened, and that was not at all intended. I mean, that was just pure winky dink uh but i'd like to get back into astral sorcery today and i'll tell you why a couple things i'd like to do one uh i definitely want to play with the tick accelerating ritual at some point so because it's a solar eclipse we can probably uh get to that point at least now uh where we can have that i would love to have a few crystals ready to go for that but i don't think we can make them all in time but i can at least discover right because we've got a handful of you know crystals here that have all kinds of cool things but yeah meh we'll see a vetus and size and shape and all that good stuff um but yeah i wouldn't mind at least discovering the tick accelerating ritual um but the main thing i wanted to do today was start playing with astral because i would like to i think my next main task that I'd like to work towards is maybe a wither farm. And there's several ways you can automate killing the wither. I would like to try it with Astral. I've done it several different ways in the past. Um, this playthrough, I want to do it with Astral. I think I've done it with Astral before, using the Astral ritual that harms nearby mobs. But as I recall, <clears throat> if we get the like a really good ritual crystal for that, it can do some really good damage really quickly. So I'd like to try it out in this new version of Astral and see how it works out. So we're going to set up like something like this, but for killing mobs. And then we'll set up an area where we can generate a nether, probably either by button push or lever or something like that. So we can farm nether stars. That sound like a plan? Um, so several different mods will come together in making a nether farm, <coughs> a wither farm for nether stars. And that'll be, I think, a good time. So first things first, we have to wait for it to be nighttime. I'm going to peek through my telescope. Let's see what constellations I've yet to discover. Uh, so we've got a lot of these guys, right? Uh, Evorcio, Octans is good. Fornax is good. Pelotrio we haven't really quite found, I guess. Uh, Horologium. This is the tick accelerating one. That's only in the sky after a solar eclipse. Boots we've got. Them's made for walking. And also a pretty cool constellation. Uh, which well, I would probably like the ritual of this. Uh, what this does is it makes animals magically shed their produce. In other words, without killing the animal, you can get their drops. <laughs> That's kind of neat. Lucerna, Mineralis we've got. All right, so really the only two are Horologium and Pelotrio are the two that we haven't discovered yet through the telescope. And it might not be a terrible idea uh, to also go through our research tree and continue like progressing, right? Because we haven't gotten to chapter five yet. I think in order to do that, we need an iridescent altar, which is the, the bigger altar structure. Uh, having one of those might not be a bad idea. Uh, so we probably want to both tech up through Astral, but also with the intention of getting to the point where we can have an awesome kill with our setup. So that's the plan. Cool. Uh, and if we advance to this tier, then we can get uh, a discovery of other constellations that can affect and modify your rituals, crystals which can make them even more damaging, probably, maybe. We'll see. I'm not sure. I forget, but we'll find out. Also different because, you know, new version of Astral. So uh, how about step one? We should probably look into making this happen. Uh, and then step two. So in order to get this, we need the resonating gem. We did that thing, right? Yes. So that's cool. Um, really? No wireless transmitter in range from over here? Aquamarines. Wow, we're low on aquamarines. Holy cow. Do we have more in here not so much i'm gonna grab what i do have you know star metal and all that stuff 
uh, some some things here that are you know handy to have, and I should have my resonating wand at the ready too. Uh, though now that we have you know a pretty healthy refined storage system, I should really just kind of put all that stuff in there. Hey, real quick side note: I turned off emergency hover because guess what? The angel ring I made last episode totally negates all fall damage. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, so uh, we're gonna be doing uh, in improving of this altar, right? Teching it up. Let's get some aquamarines. I might have to fly around the world real quick, but priority one for me is going to be... Oh, hello. Um, and I'm probably going to need some more buckets of liquid starlight. I'm going to let that thing cook while I think about... Do we have a tank that I can borrow? We totally do. How about an advanced one? That can hold 28 buckets, and we've got 513 buckets here. I was hoping that you would fill up easily. 800 millibuckets. 1600, okay. So if I just click this a whole bunch. I wasn't sure if it would be like add and remove or how that would work, but yeah, there we go, 28. Sweet. Gotta be ready over here to fill things up. Only my thing reached. I'm actually really close, but meh. Okay, did you guys, you're okay. So I know we need a few of these, not a big deal. And as soon as I make these guys, which man, just look at that, how cool. How cool is that? Super cool, that's the answer. Nice. All right, so I'm gonna get these four so I can upgrade my altar, but I'm also gonna peek through the telescope in a minute to find Horologium and maybe, what was it, Fornax that I also needed? No, we'll see. Uh, but one more of these should be cool. Nope, we lost a bucket. There you go. And soon I'll be able to not have to worry about that anymore. Once we unlock tier 5 of Astral, we won't have to worry too much about that. Sweet. Okay, so with that said, we're ready to upgrade this thing. Let's take a peek through here for four next, shall we? Um, or logo maybe two. I don't see nothing there. I don't see nothing there. Mm. Horologium should be in the sky tonight, right? It really, really super duper should be. Because it's the night after a solar eclipse, and that means... Yeah. Maybe I'll give it a little bit more time. Maybe the once the moon gets up there, or maybe over there. -ish. I'll come back in a minute. You know what, maybe I already discovered Horologium, because that's it. That's it right there. So why is it giving me the question marks? I thought the question marks means it hasn't been discovered yet. But I guess we already discovered it, so maybe we're cool. Anyway, let's upgrade the altar then. Let's do that. So in order for this to happen, right, we need to, uh, in the constellation tree, get the iridescent altar. We're going to need some ruined marble, some sooty marble and any kind of celestial crystal. I'll just get one of the small ones that has size on it, because remember size is easy to upgrade. You just drop it in a pool of water and it gets more size, right? So that should be you. Some of you and some of you ruined marble. I might need a few more of these, so we should be prepared. Hey, look at that, we have a lot of marble now. We sure do. We have a lot of marble, courtesy of that mining dimension thing that I set up. Okay, so then you, from Astral, we want the Iridescent Altar. Sweet. We're ready to go. Make it happen. Dun, 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 dun. I just like the, uh, the massive particle effects. Each tier of Altar, as it upgrades, has more and more particle effects that occur. Um, so it's just super cool to watch. You know me. I like the eye candy. I'm not even going to deny that I like eye candy. Boom! Your vision expands. Can you take me higher? Yes, I can, sir. Uh, so now we need to do uh, the multi-block structure around this thing for it to still be a valid crafter. But luckily, uh, what we've got here is, uh, you know, just some upgrades to the existing stuff. So not a massive change. We just have to add, like, a handful of bricks, it looks like, and that's about it. So let me get some bricks... Might need a few more of these. I'm just gonna make it a stack, because why not? 
So we've got um, one, two. I'm going to do it with Angel Ring Flight. Right, like that. And then we don't need this one here. But one, two, one, two. So right now you should be red. Now you should be, whoa, hello, blue. Happy, good. Ah, uh, that's cool. That's all there is to it. Handful of bricks and your multi-block is complete. Which looks great. Um, so now this thing's ready to roll. Uh, we've got, oh, that's cool, that's different. That's a different uh, little particle there. There used to be a crystal hanging there, but now it's just, uh, that's neat. That's cool. And we have almost a full table, which is nice. <clears throat> that is really nice, actually. I like that. Looking good. So now that we've got this guy uh, upgraded, we have a whole new chapter in Astral that we can get into. Specifically, uh, for constellations, there's a new set of constellations that we have available to us under Radiance. Um, so if we were to go look at some constellation paper that previously said there was nothing there, we now discovered our first dim constellation? Is that what they are? Uh, Gelu, Gelu, which may or may not be in the sky tonight. We're gonna, but in order to discover them, we need the Astral Observatory. So that's not a thing that we can discover just yet. Um, so let's see. This chapter unlocked the Irradiant Star. Uh, shifting stars are well suited to brute force disruption of a personal attunement, but more refined methods exist. Filtering the light used for crafting and adding aspects from items allows an advanced star to be crafted that modulates attunement energies instead of disrupting them to failure. The attunement route will shift to match the irradiant star, and all perk points will be deallocated, but any growth progress will not be reverted. This allows the sorcerer to reallocate the points without losing any. That last chapter is the most important part. Basically, um, before, with our attunement, right, that's perks, this stuff... Um, we could completely reset our progress and lose all the perk points. We now have a way to reset our progress without losing the perk points. It just refunds them to us so we can reallocate them, which is cool. The observatory is what we need. Well, that's a complicated recipe, but we can make it happen. Uh, in order to discover these new constellations that are available to us, right? To increase the visual reach into the stars, more filtered lenses and reactive powders will be needed than the telescope required. The more sensitive viewing an observatory offers allows a sorcerer to delve deep into the sky field following the slightest hint of magical energies back to its source constellation. In the deep depths of the astral, more constellations faintly shine their magical power forth, barely distinguishable against the background noise of existence. As the observatory is very precise, moving the mouse is necessary to aim around the night sky. When a prospective constellation is located, holding shift will lock the view, allowing the constellation to be traced. Press right click or escape to leave the observatory view and dismount the observatory seat by pressing shift. So in other words, we have access to new constellations, which I think are faint constellations is what they're called, uh, but we'll find out when we uh, check one out. And uh, we have to discover them, instead of using the telescope, we have to use that observatory. I think there's four, or at least there were in previous iterations of the mod. So what I'm going to do is spend a minute or two just popping around the uh, landscape here, finding some shrines, and uh, potentially grabbing a little bit more constellation paper. Wow, this was a terrible shrine. But hey, there are three constellation papers in it, so I can't complain too much. Ulteria, Vorox, and Alcara. So I'm just going to find one more shrine now. Hello. Hello, bad guys. And uh, once we find the last shrine... If we just find some more constellation people, that'll validate for us that we don't have any more constellations to discover. So a quick bit of whizzing around. I didn't think it would take this long to find another one because these guys aren't usually that rare, but bad RNG, bad. Come on, RNG, you can do it. I was all like, this is only going to take a second, so I'll do it on camera rather than doing a cut. But then RNG decided to be rude. Come on, there's, there's legitimately got to be one. Hey, cool, I found a village. Found a waystone, which I'll snag for sure. World gen waystones, grab them when you can. I should put that aerial thing on my helmet too, so that I can break things, you know, plenty fast. All right, this is becoming hilariously sad, so I'll come back once I actually find uh, a thing. All right, here we go, finally found one. Thank you. 
and blank constellation paper. So I don't think there's any more constellations for me personally to find. So if you're on a server, like I said, leave these constellation papers behind so that if you have other people that you're playing with, I'll take an emerald, uh, you can easily uh, make it, you know, so that they have things to discover too, right? Because, you know, these constellation papers, you'll never get any more of. You don't need them. So you might as well just, you know, be a nice server player and leave them for others to find. All right, I'm going to grab a few aquamarine and then we'll right back. All right, I'm adding the constellations that I just got. The four dim or whatever they are, constellations, faint, uh, to my book. Now, what these do is they can modify the properties of a ritual. So, for example, I know there's one that reduces the range of the ritual, so it affects a smaller radius, but amplifies the effect, so it makes it do more things in a smaller radius. So, for example, for the growth one, rather than covering a large area and slowly speeding up the growth of things, it'll cover a very small area and rapidly speed up the growth of things in that area. Uh, and the same for <clears throat> damaging mobs. All right, so something I'd like to do, if I can, is maybe automate this bad boy over here. Uh, the best way to do said automation, though, would probably be to get this guy, the containment chalice, uh, which is cool because what it can do uh, is feed starlight to that multi-block structure rather than using it from the pools around it. Um, so that's a thing. Cool. The chalice is able to draw liquid starlight through the ether from light wells within 16 blocks of its line of sight. Oh, that's cool. Like the light well, a chalice can be connected to pipes from the bottom face. As the chalice facilitates magical transport from light wells, the essence of any fluid contained within may leak, seeking out other fluidic essences to merge with. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that... Um, yeah. An ever-shifting fountain? That's another thing that does cool stuff. We'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, necromantic Prime, Fisidilic Prime, Icosic Resonator, things to later. And Mantle of the Stars, cool stuff too. Um, but yeah, what we want to get is a containment chalice. So in order for us to craft this, we're going to need uh, five relays because you have to place items around um, the, the altar here. So rather than just placing them in the grid now, you actually have to also place items around it. And some recipes require you to insert constellation paper into uh, the, the crafting thing as well. So I think, uh, let's see, this, for example. See how there's a constellation behind it? That constellation paper would get inserted into this slot. You literally just grab one of the pages, whichever one you need, for that purpose. Now, the containment chalice doesn't have constellation paper behind it, so we don't have to worry too much about that. But we still want five or so relays. So I'm going to get, like, a handful of relays from Astral. Uh, the relays are glass lens, which now we can make in the starlight with just a glass pane, by the way. So notice how I grabbed some of those ahead of time. So boom, and we can get ourselves glass lenses rather than wasting aquamarines. Not that aquamarines are rare, but still, you know, it's nice to have a little bit of a renewable resource doing the thing. So let me get my bucket back out. I decided to start using this quantum bag as like a proper store the things kind of thing. And, you know, it's been going well. There you go. Back in a minute once I make, uh, I'm going to make like six or seven of these. All right. So now we want some astral relays times eight. <laughs> nice and quick. And what we want to do is kind of place them around the altar. So I'm thinking something like this ought to be cool. Does that sound good? Okay. So now let's look into making the chalice, which is one of the first things we're going to want to make. And then we're also going to want the uh, observatory. So let's add these both to the list. So you need some sooty marble, gold, star metal, resonating gems, aquamarines. You get the gist. Back when I have all the resources. All right, so we should be good here. So let's kick off this craft. This is the first time I'm crafting with this version of Astral. Let's see how it goes. So what should happen is during the crafting, Right? If we look at the recipe for the chalice, it'll tell me that there's five aquamarines that need to be placed around it. Other recipes have different things. And what'll happen is it'll pick one of the astral relays and show a transparent image of what item it needs. Boom. And then it'll progress a little further and show you another one. Boom. Now, as 
Other recipes don't require five of the same item, right? So this is a unique recipe in that all the items are the same. So there'll be, for example, in the um, observer that we see in a minute, there'll be other things that we need to get. Look at that. And you can see like the four blue, or the five blue beams of light radiating up to the center. Isn't that cool? I love it. Whoosh. And we've got our containment chalice. Nice. Now, are you guys all happy? You are. So what I'm going to do is pop this dude here. And maybe I'll put him here with you. Cool. Can I do this and that? Will you absorb from the bottom? Maybe not. But will you output to the top? Also probably not. We'll find out. So you don't have like a sidedness output. I can shift right click you. I know you'll dump to the bottom, but I don't know if you'll dump to the top. Probably not. So what I'm gonna do is get a fluid pipe, just one. Pop you down a level or two. Cool. And then we can extract you, and then you should start filling up with liquids, which I assume is correct. Yay, look at all the dirt we're getting thanks to that mining doohickey. Uh, so that should be cool, I think. I mean, you've got lots of liquid in you, I presume. So are you gonna still do the thing where you do that for me? Yes, see how it's doing that? And check this out, if we take a look at this, oh, he's empty already, well, that's fine. Uh, I don't know how much is in there, but that's okay. But the, the story here now is that rather than it occasionally absorbing from one of the pools that I have to then refill, it'll always pull from the chalice and it'll pull a small amount. So in general, this is both more efficient in terms of starlight and more automatable because we no longer have to check which of these source blocks got lost and then manually replace them right so that's pretty cool that is super cool so now we can kind of automate this guy a little bit let's look at it so what i'm going to probably want is a user of some sort so there's the item user from cyclic um i might need two of these but let's see what we got so you only have one slot okay that's fair so if we wanted another one of these that should be doable Lots of gold for you, huh? Okay, dispenser and good, good. And let's also get a flux point. So what we're probably gonna want is a flux point here with this guy and this guy. Okay, you can be Daryl 20's network, which means you guys fill up with power. Nice. Uh, tick delay every 20 seconds requires redstone, always on. Also, always on. So now, if I give you a wand. Yeah, so you're not perfect because you try to put the wand in there. That I don't love. And are you taking it out? Is that what's happening? Yeah, I don't love that. Ow, oh, he's popping it off and on. Ugh, rip. That's not ideal. See, Extra Utilities Mechanical User was very finessable, and you could say exactly what kind of clicking you wanted it to do, and you could automate this easier. Uh, this might be a little trickier than I was hoping for. Let's see what else I got. So how about a hopper? Will that work? It would seem like the answer is no. Correct. So I'm thinking not as easy as I would want it to be for item users to happen. Uh, integrated dynamics might be the solution here, but I don't want to get into that right now. So let's hold off on automating this guy and we'll look at doing that in a future episode where we focus on integrated dynamics to do it. There might be another way to do it without integrated dynamics. I'm just not able to think of one just at this minute. All right, so a little bit of crafting needs to happen at the moment. Uh, I would like 
you at the celestial altar to make one of these. Whoosh. Am I missing something? Do you not have enough power? You should have enough power. That's weird. What's that all about? I mean, I know it's not nighttime, but come on. Let's go. Do the thing. Maybe I need a little bit more starlight. I'll wait till night, I guess. Yep, I think that was it. Even though it looked like we had enough. Uh, but what I need to make the observatory is some infused glass. And infused glass requires any color of lens, right? So I should be able to do that. Looks like we need a little bit more stardust. Uh, we need some more stardust. I know we've got some star metal hanging around. Really? Stardust doesn't have a recipe? Cool. Star metal. Didn't Stardust have a recipe before? Did that get broken? So I think what we want to do is turn off our magnet clearly. There you go. There's Stardust. That'll work. All right, so here we go. Making that glass bit, and then we need some illumination and nocturnal powder. And that should be it. So once this is done crafting, we should be having everything up. Oh, we need another lens. I thought I had a glass lens. What's up with you? Glass lens. It's right there in my inventory. Oh, I need two glass lenses. Okay, well, there's your problem. Luckily, that's easy now. All oh, right, magnet. Thank you. So you, you, and then we're going to need two, four illumination and two nocturnal, which I think requires this thing to craft, so I should clear that out. Uh, unless I have some in here. Uh, we're gonna want nocturnal and illumination. Nocturnal needs illumination, so we need some coal, black dye and lapis and then you're going to be glowstone and aquamarine so we're going to want i'll get eight of them right uh coal times two uh lapis and black dye or ink sac should be cool okay so illumination powder go Maybe two sets of those nocturnal powder so used to having my magnet turned on? You have no idea. Boom. And now you should be cool. And we've got two Stardust ready to go. All right, and does this need a, it doesn't, no constellation. Oh wait, it does, it needs a, that constellation, I guess. Hang on, um, let's just double check that. Yeah, Radiance. Observatory needs the U constellation, which is what again? Lucerna, Lucerna. So let's get the Lucerna paper, which was you. You're gonna go in there. No, wait, it's a, it's not the paper that goes in there. I remember now, it's uh, It's actually It's actually a crystal that needs to go in there. So I happen to have a Lucerna crystal. Uh, so you're a collector crystal, you're a normal crystal. I, do I wanna take this off and potentially have mobs spawn around me when I'm doing this? Probably not. So let's get, um, it's not super important what the stats of the crystal are, as far as a no. So what I'm gonna do is grab another size one of these and we're going to Lucerna it up. So we need a focus crystal, not the constellation paper. For some reason, I always thought it was the constellation paper. I think this is Lucerna, by the way. It is, he's already set with Lucerna, but Lucerna is not in the sky tonight is the problem. Um, I don't think, because we would see the see the thing on the ground if it was, right? Uh, so let's sleep through the night and get Lucerna out. Hooray, Lucerna's in the sky. Somewhere. There, there you are, sweet. All right, so you with the size one crystalline. 
probably turn off my magnet for this, since he's clearly derping it up. Looking, looking, looking. Sweet. Alright, so then this goes in here. Attuned to Lucerna. And you can see the constellations show up in the black section underneath here. That's how you know you're good. Cool. So now we can activate. And that should be cool. And now it's going to tell us which items to put where. So I think I just need these three, right? Yes. So you're going to go there. And you're going to go there. And look how cool it is, is that it... It, it uses the color of the item for the beam. See? So you have like a blue laser coming up here, you got a couple yellow lasers, you got like a dark laser coming like that's super cool. That is super cool. Another yellow. Some nocturnal. Some illumination. And now that, whoosh. Good to go. Wow, would you look at that? We've discovered the observatory. Pop him around here somewhere. Look at this giant monster. Isn't he cool? Man, that is a model and a half, let me tell you. So we jump into the seat of the observatory here, and we can start looking through the lens for... Oh, hang on. There's something. There's something. What is that? Uh, so let's get the list of constellations that we want to look at on my screen so that I can reference them. Just take a little screenshot and open them up on a second monitor. Uh, there's something. Okay, so hold shift to start drawing and let's figure out what this one is. He looks like Alcara, which I'm going to say is something like this, this, this. And here and that. That is definitely Alcara. Hooray! Discovered Alcara. Nice. And now we can look for some more constellations here. Uh, looks like that's getting dimmy. They definitely jumped out at me when I found them earlier. Oh, there we go. Like if you if you're scrolling relatively quickly, they jump out for sure. They just boom. There you go. Right. Uh, so this one looks like Gelu, maybe? Yeah, that looks pretty much like Gelu. So that would be you to here, all the way up here, down there, 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 and there. Boom. Nice. Okay, any others out tonight in the wild night sky? Whee! Just gotta scan through the observatory. I do like this mechanic. I think it's super cool. Like, call me a space nerd, but looking through a giant observatory for some constellations and having to draw them on the screen. I, I, From the very first time I played Astral and did the whole drawing the constellations in the sky to, like, discover and unlock them, I was just like, this is cool. All right, so that's enough for now. I don't think there's anything else. Um, hey, stop twitching, Twitcher. There you go. Because uh, he does, I believe, spin as you you know, look around a little bit, but that's cool. Nice. Cool, right? Super neat. Uh, so now that we've discovered Gelu, um, and Ulteria is, I think, the one I want, but Gelu, the cold depths of the astral, perfect match for this chilly constellation's supernatural powers. Ritual trait modifier. As the insidious cold diminishes output with its deep chill, so too does it spread wide its embrace, increasing the reach of the ritual nearly four times over, but reducing its strength to nearly one-sixth. So in other words, the opposite of what we want. Uh -huh. Pretty sure Ulteria is the one I want. Vorox we didn't, but Alcara we found. All things in the universe have their own subtle harmony to them. The latest constellation changes those vibrations, twisting them to other ends. Attuned crystals are far more likely to fracture while used, and their effects become discordant and corrupted. The exact impact depends on the primary constellation. That's kind of cool. I have no idea what that means. But it sounds like it, like, affects things. I wonder if there's a way to find out. Corrupted ritual effect. Care turns to slaughter as the creatures of the field are butchered by the ritual while leaving an overabundance of resources behind. That's cool. 
That is cool. We should flip through some of these other ones. Dissidia. Um, so normally, the intensity increases as more starlight is channeled. So this one's the damaging one. The corruptive ritual, an offensive weapon empowers foes. Allies will find themselves wounded, and enemies will be suffused with both regeneration and resistance. Why would you ever want that? I don't know, but it sounds cool. Uh, Avidus. The light of creation turns to decay with living creatures sapped of their life and strength and plants disintegrating into dust. That is cool stuff. Vicio. The very air turns against the movement of those inside the ritual with flight disabled and great slowness and mining fatigue inflicted. Neat. Armara. Protein protection is turned to assault with previously repelled creatures now empowered in speed, strength, and resistance. That's neat. So it kind of reverses most of these things, right? Um... So this breaks blocks. Destruction turns to creation with the air becoming dirt, stone, or sometimes ores. That's kind of neat. Curious what that looks like. It just like generates. That's kind of cool. Octans. The ocean rebels with a sea forming around the pedestal. A violent deluge of fish falling from the sky and other nearby liquids turning drying to sand. Oh, <laughs> that's cool. I really, I mean, that's neat. I don't remember that from previous versions. Heat flees the area with liquids freezing, fires extinguished, and the very moisture in the air freezing into solid blocks of ice. Mm -hmm. Pelotrio. Inner darkness is called forth, erupting from nearby creatures and twisting them into dire, darker forms. These creatures, when slain, have an abundance of loot burst forth from them. Oh man, that's cool. Horlogium. Nearby creatures and blocks are held in stasis as if frozen in time. Boots. That's the one that Kara turns to slaughter. Lucerna, daylight is cast away, and the time of starlight lasts far longer. Mm. Mineralis, lucrative mineralization becomes obstructive, and the air turns to chunks of stone beneath the walker. Neat. So there's some cool stuff there. I like that. You can you can uh, corrupt the rituals and have give them a whole different effect. But like I said, the main one we're looking for is going to be uh, Ulteria, which I'm pretty sure this is the opposite of Gelu in that it's smaller radius but more powerful effect. So what we'd want is a super powerful crystal that harms enemies and will add the uh, ulterior effect to it which makes it harm them even more. And then we'll see what that does to the wither. But all of that is going to have to happen in a future episode, because for now, it's wrapping up point. Daryl 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We will come back next time. Um, I think what I'm going to do is start working on a really nice crystal and or two, right? Because we want one for the ritual that's going to be really good at, you know, being a ritual crystal. And then we want another one that's going to be really good at absorbing starlight. And if they're both attuned to the damaging... Bit, that would be even cooler, right? So the one we want is Dissidia, right? Uh, lashing, the intense, uh, lashing out at nearby enemies. Yeah, so Dissidia is the constellation that we want to focus Starlight from. So if we happen to find a Celestial Focus of Dissidia, that would be cool. Um, that would be super cool. Anyway, wrapping up point, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time to play more with this cool stuff. Yeah, I think we have like a whole bunch of them except Dissidia. Look at that. Terrible. Terrible, I say. But anyway, take it easy.